this is For the Love of London. It's a book about what makes London great by those who make it great. It's a book that was conceived after, after being away from London a little while um, and coming back and, and realising how much I love it how much there is to love about it. Yes, hello, I'm Stephen Fry, uh, a Londoner. That's to say I was born in London in, uh, in W3. Um, grew up in the countryside, came back as soon as I was able, which is to say after university, and I've had a, a foothold here ever since. Well, do you know, the thing I always remember is I remember as a kid loving going on the underground because I was fascinated by the train fitted absolutely into that tunnel. I used to sort of, when we used to go, I used to be really excited going on the underground and watching the train come out of that tunnel. I think it's amazing, it just fits in. Yeah, me. My name is Mark Baxter, I'm 53 from Camwell in South East London. I have no fucking idea whatsoever. <laughs> well, basically, my answer to that is what do you want? What do you need? Then, then I'm off. Yeah. I'm off and running. I'm Peter York and I'm a natural born Londoner, so I've been here forever. I'm not making this up, my earliest memory of London, I've got two. One was Madame Two Swords when I was like eight years old and my father lost me, which was actually quite cool. And my second, which was slightly more happier, was a 16 year old kid with a bunch of money in my hand coming to Denmark Street to buy one of my first guitars. My name's Sophie Walker and I'm the leader of the Women's Equality Party. Fantastic, and how long have you been in London, Sophie? Uh, so I've lived in London on and off for more than 20 years. Um, I've, my job um, as a reporter has taken me away for a couple of years at a time, but every, every time I always come back. I'm the sort of person who I can't help it. I stare, I stare. It's got me into trouble so many times in my life where I just stare at people. And this person, person, is, is, I mean, is walking the other way, like on massive heels, massive heels, with the heels about six foot five. Really loads of like bright floral dress and all this. And I'm like, and as he came up to me, he just suddenly said, hello darling, do you want the fuckers? <laughs> My name's Lee Bofkin, I'm one of the co-founders of Global Street Art. We've been running for about four years and our mission is to live in a painted city. My name's Lau Hardy, I'm a tattoo artist in the lovely leafy suburb of Muswell Hill here in London. I've been at New Wave Tattoo in Sydney Road for 33 years now. He used to be an old boy down here, we called him Freddy the Funeral. <laughs> Every time there was a funeral he couldn't wait to get his fucking suit on, right? <laughs> and he ended up that he met the Queen and everything, him and his missus over taking to a Buckingham Palace thing because he worked on the council forever. I remember as a child coming up uh, during the summer with my cousins um, and on this occasion they were down from Scotland and my dad took us up uh, to see Buckingham Palace and to see the House of Commons and we were walking along Whitehall and we had down the street on the left hand side and on the right hand side walking down the middle of the road was a tall man in a uh, stilettos, a black leather mini skirt and a bra top and my dad didn't know which way for us children to, to look whether at the despised Margaret Thatcher or this man walking down the middle of the road so it was a perfect combination We like the Anton Deck like of it. political yeah. satire That's it, yeah. We like the Chuckle Brothers of Just politics. less rich and successful <laughs> We came down to Connaught Square to give Tony Blair this uh, stained glass window. From raining democracy from the skies in the Middle East. And, and freeing all the Arab children. Because we wanted did. him to be sort of canonised. We, went in there, we made this amazing stained glass window from the top of his door. Um, and we uh, actually got into his house because just inside his door is a Catholic altar with yeah. loads of iconography just like this. When his maid answered the door, she kind of looked at me with the stained glass window and looked at the, <laughs> the altar and was like, oh, come in. How mental okay. is that? Yeah. That's true as well. <laughs> what is amazing to me is that they saw this and they thought that was fucking legit. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. It's pretty good. It's so good, isn't it? <laughs>
I've lived in London probably since 1977. I was a postgraduate student at the Warburg Institute. I'd been at Cambridge and uh, my girl, then girlfriend, now wife, we uh, rented a flat in Trinity Church Square. I find it odd now thinking that as a postgraduate student on a state grant I was able to rent a flat in one of the more beautiful squares in London. My name is Ed Gray. I'm an artist uh, and a painter and I paint pictures of London and the people of London is, is the main thing that I'm interested in, in making work about and really celebrating the people that I see in the streets. My name is Lloyd Bradley, I'm an author, I write mostly about music, uh, largely black music, um, I write occasionally about sports, not so much. I've lived in London all my life, uh, only ever lived on two pages of the A to Z until uh, three years ago. One of my earliest memories of London was uh, from my first year in London of, of going up almost religiously to get bagels from the Brick Lane Bagel Bakery after coming out of the Student Union Bar in 1989. And uh, Brick Lane was very different then, needless to say. But the bagels were exactly the same. <laughs> my earliest memories in London... Well, my earliest memories in London is, is really even being mesmerised by the statue of Guy the Gorilla in Crystal Palace, I think. Hi, uh, my name is Grant Gillespie. I'm an actor and a writer. I ran away uh, to London about 20 years ago and I've lived about half that time in Soho. My earliest memory of Soho is going straight to the French house, which I'd read about because it was the, uh, the place for the French resistance, uh, the HQ for the French resistance and Rambo and all these bacon and everybody drank it. A.A. Gill uh, said about the French house that um, all the characters in there are so well read and so badly written, which I think is just extraordinary because you know, the best minds of our generation are drinking themselves to oblivion in there, which is fantastic. Yeah, me. Uh, my name is uh, Bobby Kasanga and I'm the founder of Hackney Rip Football Club. The only London joke I know is a knock knock joke. So I'm saying knock knock. Who's that? M A B, it's a big horse. M A B, it's a big horse too. M A B, it's a big horse, I'm a Londoner. Thank you. Um, <laughs>